Good morning, church. It's good to be with you here today. And today we are in Numbers chapter 1 and 2. And the Israelites have been at the base of Mount Sinai for 11 months now. Um, Moses has been up on the mountaintop twice. He's gotten the, the law and a lot of other prescriptions on how the Israelites are to conduct themselves and how to live. And finally, God gives them some directions on how to take a census, how many of them there are, and how to camp around the tabernacle to set up and depart. They're basically ready for war at this point. Um, we're not going to get to their departing. Actually, numbers will walk back in time just a little bit. Um, but later on in the book, we'll see them depart. And of course, the tragedies that take place later on in that narrative. Uh, but one of the big takeaways of just hearing the order and the rigidity that God gives is the reminder that he is a God of order not a God of chaos, and that he was successfully uh, preparing his people to go in and, and to do battle, and that we should be reminded that we have a task to do battle today, that we are given um, our own marching orders. God has told us how to organize ourselves um, as a church and as a people He's given us the land to conquer, that we are to go out and spiritually go forth and, and spread his word and his kingdom. And he's given us the rules of engagement by which we're to do that. You know, the Israelites had their had the law, and we have the law of Christ, the law of love. Um, and we are marching forward, not that we have a, a physical promised land, but we do have the promise that God is with us and that someday he will make all things new. So it's just kind of a fun little uh, parallel and way to look at things that God operates in a similar way, even when he's doing something totally new. Also in Acts chapter four, I wanted to point out that uh, Felix gets afraid of Paul. Paul has been arrested. He's been taking taken over to where the governor Felix is for trial. Uh, the Jews are being very um, rascally and trying to trap him and put him in, in a real bind. And so Felix chooses to leave Paul in prison. Historically, if you look up Felix, he's not a, a very strong leader historically. And uh, this is on display here. He's just really avoiding making a decision. He's looking for a bribe. Uh, but Paul stands fast, and he just takes these opportunities to share the gospel. And this is what it looks like. Verse 25. Now, as he spoke about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix became afraid and replied, Leave for now. But when I have an opportunity, I'll call for you. This goes on for two years. Uh, Paul never does get released. He never does get a fair trial. Uh, we're going to see the conclusion of, the, of this whole matter in just a few days. But it was righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come. Those three items made Felix afraid. Not just judgment in general, but how to live a righteous life, how to live with self-control, and in anticipation of that judgment. And so church, uh, those are the three elements that when we talk to people, we should be making sure we're including. How do you live a righteous life? What does it mean to live with self-control and to talk about the judgment that is to come and how do we avoid that? That's the good news of Jesus Christ. And so we can take note from Paul and that that will agitate people. I mean, talk about self-control. Today's motto is do whatever you want. Do what feels good. Um, just just let it all out there. And Paul's was self-control. And that is making people uh, agitated and upset and even afraid. And so we shouldn't expect a different response today than he got then because it's the same message and people are the same. Ecclesiastes is right. There's really nothing new under the sun. It just looks different. Well, church, happy Saturday. 
I sure love you lots, and I'll look forward to seeing you soon.